Hey y'all, Farmer Dre back at it. I am out here in the strawberry patch, or what was the strawberry patch. Isaac and I are just cleaning it up, taking out the sandbags, row covers, and getting ready for another crop. But in today's video, I wanna talk about how many pounds we picked and how much money we made off these 10,000 plants this season. As you can see here, I came through and did a complete, complete burn down of the strawberry patch. And as you guys know, the plan is to come through and direct seed, you know, some cucurbit crops, you know, squash, zucchinis, plant a few rows of tomatoes out here and uh, all kinds of summer stuff plant out here in the strawberry patch or what was in the strawberry patch. And the benefit of doing this, you know, we are double cropping the uh, plastic and the drip tape. So the system that we grew our strawberries on is called the plastic culture system. We went ahead and planted these in September, end of September. So on this system, what you wanna do is plant them in the fall. You let them grow up until winter. Then they acclimate over the winter and then you can cover them in row cover so you can protect them from the cold. And then during the spring, you take off the row covers and then you let them flower and then you start harvesting the berries. There's many different ways to grow strawberries. A strawberry plant is a perennial plant, meaning it will live for more than two to three years. So studies show that strawberry plants are most productive in their first season. So that's why we went ahead and did this system. I'm gonna get into talking about this later, but you know, the goal in this system is to go ahead and produce as many berries as you can in the spring. And then we're gonna come through, you know, we burned it off, we replant, and then every year you gotta replant the uh, strawberry plants, new drip tape, new plastic. So this is called the plastic culture system on the strawberries. So for the ones who know, this is my first year ever growing strawberries. You know, we're mainly a apple and peach orchard. If you guys saw my last video, you guys know. And in my last video, I talked about the five biggest mistakes. And you know, I wanna show what I learned first before, you know, I jumped into making this video. And the reason behind that is, you know, it's all fun and games, but until you don't try, you don't actually learn, you know, on your own hands. There's a lot, you know, I listened to a lot of researchers. I did my own research on, um, on strawberries and stuff, but until you don't actually try it, you, you, you know, you're never going to learn, you know, from your own skin. So that's why I went ahead and made that video before, but you know, now it is time to talk about, you know, how many pounds we produced. So like I had mentioned in my previous videos, the single most important things before you go ahead and plant a a big crop or plant anything is to know if you have a market for the product and in the past you know we've always had people ask us if we do have strawberries and if we grew them and you know we just we just it never dawned on us to grow strawberries so us knowing we had a slight demand for strawberries we went ahead and planted these things so you know before you go ahead and plant let's say an acre of strawberries or an acre of tomatoes or whatever make sure that you have where to sell your product if you don't have where to sell your product then you are just growing a big compost pile first of all you got the expense of the basically expensive of plastic mulch uh, the drip tape the plants all that good stuff and you know i just hate seeing someone you know just grow a crop and they have nowhere where to sell it and another thing to keep in mind is to look around and see if anybody in your area is actually growing the crop you want you know if we're here in southwest missouri and there is a handful of uh strawberry patches here in our area so first thing i did is you know i uh kind of got interested and kind of tried talking to other farmers and you know saw how well the the crop grows here in this area and uh if if it's possible growing it so one of our extension agents was telling me one time that he got a call from someone in the area he wanted to put in a 10 acre citrus farm and here in southwest missouri you know there's not a single citrus tree in the area maybe if you're growing them in a greenhouse or something but make sure your crop actually grows in your area before you go ahead and plant it because like i said if we went ahead and plant 10 acres of citrus and then comes winter all, all your trees are going to die so make sure your crop grows in in your area so those are some of the um ideas that come to mind before i talk about you know the production of these plants and everything else so as you guys know i went ahead and planted 10,000 plants there's 10,000 plants out here that's about around 0.6 of an acre. We went ahead and spaced our plants 12 inches apart and we did two different rows on each bed. So the beds are 30 inches. We put down a four foot plastic and the row spacing is about five foot center to center. If you guys watched my previous video, I learned that is, that is way too tight for our farm. And you know, growing them first year, you know, it's better to have a lot more room than to have too little room. So anyways, to get in consideration how many plants we have out here, it's about a 0.6 of an acre. 
So the total pounds of berries that I picked off the strawberry patch this year was 4,438 pounds of strawberries. And I am very happy with this number. You know, my goal was to hit at least a half pound per plant, which we got, you know, pretty close to it. You know, we we're probably a few ounces off every plant. But in taking consideration my first year and a lot of the mistakes I did make, you know, I am very happy with that number. And with all those berries we picked, now we had to sell them. So let's get into talking at what price we sold them, what containers we sold them at, and all that good stuff. So we were picking the strawberries out of the field into a 10 pound flat. And then we were just going through, stripping all the plants, taking all the green, all the ripe berries off of them and taking them inside the warehouse. So in our store, we were selling, you know, the biggest size we had is a 10 pound flat. And then we also sold in quarts and in pints. At first, we thought we were gonna have enough strawberries to go ahead and sell most of them in the 10 pound flats. But after that first week, we went ahead and posted a video on Facebook of us having strawberries and stuff. And then the orders just started flooding in. I believe at a point in time, we had three to four pages of just orders and how many people wanted. So that, at that moment, we realized that, you know, the demand for strawberries is a lot bigger than we thought. So after we completed the, all those orders and list of orders that we put in, then we pretty much stopped selling them in the 10 pound, in the 10 pound flats. And then we started, started selling them in the smaller containers. So here in our farm store, we are selling a 10 pound flat for $40, which is $4 a pound. At the farmer's market, it's a little different. We go to uh, six different farmer's markets. We go to farmer's market Tuesday through Saturday. And on Saturday, we do two. So whenever you get to pricing something, you gotta you know look at, the, look at your area and see what kind of, um, what are people willing to pay for a quart or a pint of strawberries? So at some farmer's markets, we were selling a pint of strawberries for $5. And at others, we were selling them for four. And generally, we were selling a quart for seven. And after that first week of selling strawberries, we realized that if we wanna you know, give all of our customers a chance to buy strawberries, we were going to have to sell them in the smallest container possible. So we were selling most of our strawberries in the pint containers. So if you calculate how many pounds goes into a pint, it's about 0.65 of a pound in a pint. And if you're selling them for about $5 a pint, then that is close to $8.60 a pound. And then if you're selling them at $4, it's about five sixty. And then if you sell them by the 10 pound flat, it is $4 a pound. So the best number that I could give you guys, you know, of the pounds we've sold, you know, we probably have it written down in the office there how many, how many we sold at the farmer's markets, how many sold at, at in the farm store. But let's say on average price, we were selling them for $6.30 a pound. So of the average price that we were selling the berries at, at $6.30 a pound, if you multiply that by how many strawberries you picked out of here at these 10,000 plants, so we, like I mentioned earlier, we picked a total of 4,431 pounds. If you multiply that by $6.30, that is right around $28,000. So $28,000 off of this strawberry patch isn't too bad, but the benefit that we have here on our farm is we have the bakery and you know we have the farm store up here. So let's say the, far, cu the customer was coming out to the farm to buy you know, a quart or a pint of strawberries. You know, they come into our store, look that we have strawberries, they go ahead and grab one of those, but then they see we have jams and jellies and you know, the baked goods. We, we made, made an amazing strawberry lemonade slushy that was super good. I've had quite a bit of them, as you guys could tell here. <laughs> the customer would come out to the farm for a, you know, a 10 pound flat of strawberries, and then they would come and buy a baked good, buy a jar of honey, you know, just a jam or jelly. So that, that the initial customer, instead of coming to the farm and just spending that certain amount on the strawberries, they would buy a lot more. So then let's say they come out for a, a 10 pound flat of strawberries, they buy a jar of honey and you know, some other stuff out of the store. So a $40 transaction turned into a 50 to $60 transaction. That's the beauty of having a really good customer base is you know, you have a really good product, they come and enjoy it and then you just build that customer base for them. Other than producing the strawberries, you know, that initial income that comes from having a, a crop like strawberries, you know, this early in the season, really helps you know the total revenue of the farm so just off the strawberries alone you know the gross revenue was twenty eight thousand dollars and now let's go ahead and jump into expenses that we had to go ahead and produce all these strawberries so i'm gonna go ahead and give you guys an average 
number of how much everything costs. So right off the bat, we paid close to $2,800 just for the plants. So we bought every plant for about 27 cents a piece and they gave us a little more extra. So I think on average, you paid about $2,800 just for the plugs alone. And then of course you got the plastic and the drip tape. So the roll of plastic, I believe a 4,000 foot roll of plastic of uh, one mil plastic, four foot wide is about $120 plus another drip tapes, about another $150. So that adds up pretty quick. And then you got to jump into, you know, the fertilizers and all the row covers. The row covers are about $1,600 plus the sandbags. And, um, you know, then you could take in consideration all the fungicide we used and uh, the fertilizers. And another expense that I didn't think, you know, whenever we first planted these is the containers we were going to go ahead and sell these in. So we were selling them in the quartz and pints and into the uh, 10 pound flats, you know, the boxes that all cost money. So the total expenses to produce you know the strawberries for us this year was around seventy five hundred dollars so if you take that seventy five hundred dollars the initial investment subtract it from the gross revenue you know in hand cash money is about twenty thousand dollars that we actually profited off this but then you got to take in consideration my time my labor and the labor we had to come through and pick off of these so once again the benefit of you know double cropping the uh, plastic you know and the drip tape is that number at the end of the year increases with all the other crops we are gonna grow on here so a question I get asked a lot is if we're gonna go ahead and do strawberries next year and just looking at the production of just this year's crop the answer is yes we're gonna go ahead and plant strawberries next year but hopefully next year we're gonna go ahead and plant three to four times more strawberries than we did this year you know the demand that we had was just out of the roof you know we couldn't even fulfill i say we can't even, we couldn't even fulfill probably a quarter of the demand we had i hate turning down customers but if you only have a certain amount of product then you have to and i just kept telling them maybe next year we'll plant a lot more so hopefully next year my management increases we do things a lot better we could produce more strawberries off one plant so, you know, generally they say if you produce about a pint, a, uh, a plant, then you go ahead and pay off your initial investment and then everything else in, it turns into profit. But overall, you know, you did, you, like I mentioned earlier, you just learned so much in your first year. And I'm kind of glad we start off with 10,000. It was just a trial, like I keep saying. So now next year, I know what not to do. And I'm not saying that I know everything yet about strawberries, but like I keep saying, you live and learn. But anyways, this is gonna be pretty much it for today. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, now it's time to come through, clean this all up and plant our summer crops in here. So that's what the plan is today. I'm gonna get a brush hog and brush, all, brush hog all this, try not to hit the plastic any, come through with the water wheel transplanter and drop a seed in the holes we make there and uh we're gonna go ahead and uh hopefully see another good harvest of cucumbers and squash off this this patch so this is gonna be pretty much it for today if you guys haven't already go ahead and hit that subscribe button go ahead and smash that like button if you guys enjoyed today's video don't forget to hit that notification icon so you guys can be notified whenever i do upload a video i want to say thanks for watching up to this point you guys have a good day we will see you next time